Oh, Amy thinks she knows me. She says, I, if it was up to me, I would eat mac and cheese every day of the week. Well, she's wrong. I need time for my Reese's Peanut Butter Cups too. But on this show, we are gonna cook mac and cheese. We're gonna use the Cook's Essentials Perfect Cooker, and it's gonna do a wonderful job, I will tell you that. I've made uh, mac and cheese several times, and it's really easy. This is gonna be a one pot design. We're not going to use another stock pot and boil it and mix it, put everything in here, and then it comes out and it's great. So let me show you how to use the Cook's Essentials Perfect Cooker to make some wonderful, easy, and cheesy mac and cheese. All right, first of all, what is this uh, QVC Cook's Essential Perfect Cooker? It's just a little dinky cooker. It's got some little controls down here. You can do rice and you can do cook and you can tell it how many minutes you want it to do it. And then here we pop these two things off and we have this inner pot. And you can see right there, it shows it's five cups. It's uh, Teflon in there, which means things won't stick to it. And it'll actually make a pretty tasty cheese. So we're going to use very few ingredients in this. We're not using cornstarch. We're not using a bunch of stuff that might water down the actual flavor of the cheese itself, which is the start of the show. So what we are going to do is we're going to go with two cups of elbow macaroni, small, pour that in as is. We're going to add the milk. I'm going with two cups of whole milk. I'm not using cream or half and half and or mixing that with water as a lot of different recipes call for because maybe you don't have half and half or cream in your house. But people ask, can I use milk? The answer is yes. In fact, while fat is a stabilizer, too much fat can take away from the cheese. But guess what? Cheese has its own fat. So I don't think we're gonna miss anything. And I've done it many ways. And just by adding a lot of heavy cream to it, just gives you more grease if you ever reheat it. Um, next, we're gonna go with cheese. And this is our final ingredient here. Um, I'm gonna go with actually a little bit of too much cheese. A lot of recipes call for one cup. I'm actually got two cups of grated cheddar cheese here. This is actually extra sharp. And I have, I don't know, a couple of cups. It's actually eight ounces of Velveeta. Um, and the reason I'm going with this is because cheese has proteins and it can break down. And if you reheat this the next day, maybe you take it to lunch and you wonder why does the cheese taste grainy? It's because the proteins broke down. So you need an emulsifier. There's eggs, there's mustard, there's American cheese. Yes, American cheese has so much stuff in it. It acts as an emulsifier. It binds, it helps hold the proteins together. So when you nuke it the next day, it doesn't taste weird. So I'm gonna actually mix equal parts of this in here. A lot of recipes call for just one cup of cheese. I don't know, we got about four cups here. But it actually fits, barely, but it does. So we're just gonna go ahead and pack it in here. And the cool thing about this recipe is you set it and forget it. So let me go ahead and get this in here. We're gonna stir this at some point. More details on that later. But for right now, we're just gonna pack this in here. You can put in as little cheese as you want, one cup sh um, shredded, or you can put as much as will fit physically in this thing. You can go with American if you want, instead of Velveeta. Uh, in that case, use a couple slices, shred it and put it in there, and let it melt. Um, you can really put anything in there as long as it's a soft, meltable type of cheese. So without further ado, we're gonna put the lid on here. Snap, snap. All right, so if you're gonna cook with minimal cheese, like say a cup or so, um, then this will cook faster. Basically follow 99% of the recipes out there, you just may cook this in 30-ish minutes. Me, however, with all this cheese, I'm gonna warn you. It's about an hour. It's gonna be somewhere between 60 and 70 minutes. 
you have to stir this maybe a couple of times. Don't waste your time stirring it early. It doesn't need it. You can literally let this guy go a good 40, 50 minutes and then take a look at it. So we're going to go ahead and hit the cook button and it goes in 10 minute increments up to an hour. So we're going to go up to an hour and if needed, we'll add more time. This will start counting down as it cooks, as it should and then it'll go into a warm mode for us. Um, this is, it's not a slow cooker because it actually does cook relatively fast, but it's not gonna burn your cheese like it could on a stove. So literally you can set this and forget it for quite a while. That's what makes it really great. Because it does come up to temperature kind of slowly, especially with all those ingredients in there, it's not gonna boil in like five minutes or 10 minutes it will take a while. I've seen it take as much as 40 to 50 minutes before it starts to boil. And I've seen this with a finished product, the bottom is maybe 250 degrees and the top is maybe 220 degrees. You can get a little bit of your, kind of a crust on the bottom, but you tend not to get it at the top because it's not you know, warm enough for it. Even with all the extra cheese, it still doesn't create it. So that's a little different than maybe some other cookers out there. But, you know, if you're going to come home and, I don't know, want to watch TV for a while, this is perfect, right? Because you had the ingredients, watch TV for a while, and then it's pretty easy. So we will be back after this thing is ready. So as you can see, we've got nine minutes left on this original 60 minutes. So I'm just going to go ahead and chill. I'm going to hit cancel, doink. Then I'm going to hit cook. We'll do 20 minutes and then it'll start countdown. Um, we're going to take a really quick peek at here. And, and you can see how it looks good. There's a little bit of bubbles. Um, I took that temperature a few minutes ago because I cheat. And, you know, it's not even close to boiling temperature on the top. It's only 100 degrees. So this has been cooking literally for around 50 minutes. But now at the bottom, however, it's looking pretty good. It's around 220. So some of that heat will make its way to the top, believe me. We're going to put the top back on here. I said this is kind of like a gentle cooker in that it's not going to burn things. I'm not worried about stirring at this exact moment because the macaroni is sitting at the bottom where it's nice and hot. And once I start stirring that, um, it might change a little bit from some being nice and hot and some being kind of cool until the top kind of catches up. So I'm going to leave it right there for now. Besides, right now we just have milk and cheese in there along with the uh, macaroni. Wouldn't really want to disturb them, would I? Not really. So we're going to let this go and we'll keep an eye on it. Now if you have a regular batch of this stuff going, aka one quarter of the cheese, then you probably would have wanted to look at this starting around 20, 25 minutes, cooking to maybe 30 or 35 minutes until it reaches your happiness. But because we've got so much cheese, it takes so much longer to cook. So we're doing good right now. All right, this thing is done. It went beep. So by law, that means we're ready, right? So popping the lid off. Ooh. Oh, that looks tasty. Just do a little stir. All right, Amy's got this cool little orange device here, so we're going to use that. But the average person might use what maybe they have. One of these little guys works perfect, right? You just go doink, because that guy's hot. But we got this thing. So let's see if we can just dump this in one move here, right? Oh, yeah. Get all the extra stuff out there. All right. So what we have here is we have a little bit, not really a crust, but this little bit of burnt stuff is yummy, right? Caramelization is always good, as long as it's not a total, you know, wreck. 
but you're not going to get that all the way around. For some reason, it just doesn't develop enough heat or something. So even though I didn't stir this for like literally 80% of the cook time, it never developed it on the sides. And of course, it never developed on the top. Um, but this little bit of a crust, it's tasty. That's one of the better parts of this whole thing. Um, so let's go ahead and kind of, I don't know, stir this up a little bit. We're going to show you how creamy this is because we didn't use cream, right? We just used just regular whole milk. We had a ton of cheese. Amy said, I got more cheese in here. I got macaroni. I go, yeah, but the macaroni actually swells a little bit. The cheese just condenses a little bit as the fluffiness goes away when it all melts. So, I don't know. Uh, we have a spectator. Even though she can't really eat any of this, she wants to look at it and see if it's worthy. All right, so now that we kind of played with our food a little bit, and I'm salivating here, I'm going to plate up. All right, now the fun part, right? Reaping our little harvest here. So, without further ado, get a little scoop there, plunk, got that there. We have a guest appearance by Mr. Bacon. Hi, Mr. Bacon. Put that one in there. And put that all in there. I usually don't recommend salting and stuff while you're cooking this, especially when you got cheese and a bunch of dairy because there can be a lot of salt and you can't really remove excess salt. In this case, Velveeta, I think, is going to be adding a little salt here. But definitely season the taste when you're ready. So here we go. Without further ado. So I would definitely say it's cheesy. Get a little bacon in there. So the cheese, as it, as it cools down, it's not going to be like the creamiest of stuff. It's all shiny and I don't know, at least what the boxes all look like, you know, when you got like way too much milk in there and stuff, especially that box junk with a powdered and stuff. This has got real cheese in here, so it tastes really good. It doesn't have half that fake junk in there. So I think it's, it's good. It's hard for me to describe it other than it's cheesy. Um, the cheese that you use will depend upon how this whole thing works. In this case, we got Velveeta, which melts really good. I used extra sharp New York cheddar cheese, which has its own pretty <laughs> tough taste. Um, it's not stuff that I use commonly if I'm gonna make sandwiches, but if I'm gonna bake or cook, I love to use it because it's got a lot of flavor. Um, otherwise, I would use a more milder type of a cheese. But for this, it really tastes good. The um, bacon, of course, adds its own flavor. And then, you know, if you want pepper, well, we got a little cayenne here, right? Remember, Amy's got her little system here in the pantry. So, um, I'm not really a fan of adding salt at this point. A little pepper. If you have hot sauce, you want to put that on? because that won't distract. So, so I basically say this is a pretty good winner here. Um, I don't know. We have macaroni. It's one of my favorite foods. It tastes good. I didn't have to put a lot of effort into it. If you want to put less effort into it, when you go to the store, buy the pre-shredded cheese. That way you don't have to waste time with a box grater or a food processor. Um, use three cheeses if you want. Use one cheese. What the main goal of this one is, I'm making this for my lunch tomorrow and the next day and maybe the next day. It depends on how much I got there. And I don't want to nuke it the next morning or lunch or whatever and have the cheese come off the macaroni, form a pool of, of grease, and then when you look at it, it's all stringy looking. Been there, done that. We followed the recipe, Amy did, and that's what happened. So the goal with this one was to put an emulsifier. In this case, either American cheese or Velveeta cheese. 
either by itself or with your favorite cheese, which in this case is uh, extra sharp cheddar. So we will see how that all goes, but the way I like it right now is definitely a winner. If you like this video, subscribe, give us a comment and a like, and view our website at www.amylearnstocook. We're also on Twitter and Pinterest at Amy Learns to Cook, and we're on Instagram at Cooking with Amy. Uh-oh. Cayenne's kicking in. Express yourself. Express? I'm already.